and welcome to another edition of the crochet crowd the crafting crowd and today we are doing a little sock on these DA looms it is the wonder sock 2 fully adjustable so you can do practically any size sock that you want for today's demonstration we are actually going to do an infant's uh, sock here and what we're going to do I, I got this stuff full of yarn just to keep it shape but I'm going to show you how to start on I'm going to show you how to do this kind of nice little lip instead of leaving it empty like that we're going to do that and then we're going to concentrate on the heel and then finish off and you'll notice that it comes around like so that's because this thing is fully adjustable so we can actually move these things in and out as we're working on the projects so let's get started on this infant sock and again this can be done for any size and this uh, pattern is compliments of dalooms.com so if you want to show how to do it and you want to use their product Here's a great tutorial to get started. To get started, today's tutorial, I'm working with the Bernat Mosaic yarn. I don't think I'd recommend this for actual socks. I don't think that it would keep its um, integrity. It's probably not as strong as a sock yarn. So just keep in mind that because I'm just using it just for nice visual effects, but not necessarily practicality. I'm also using today a yarn guide that I kind of got from my hairdressers. I kind of scratched her name off so just to protect her privacy. And what I want to do, this is just an empty pen. So basically I broke out the back, so don't tell her I broke her pen. And what I'm looking for in a styler is to make sure that it goes down in between the pegs, just like so. If one deck stays up, you're just not going to have as much fun as if it can go down and start using it. So let's get started and we are going to, first of all, we're doing the infant size, so we now have to adjust our loom to compensate. There are five on here and five on here, so that equals ten. To do an infant, you know, a lot of people would probably think, well, start in the middle of a loom, just like so. I don't recommend that, and the reason for, I'll show you in a second, is that when you're working your way around, you're going to have to reach in here, in this spot, and in here. So what you want to do is you kind of want to move one to the edge. So therefore, basically three sides are really easily accessible and only one side is a little more difficult. So it makes it a lot easier for yourself in order to go around. Now the DA looms, uh, you'll see that here, there's a notch here. I would suggest going one in, don't go to the very end. Um, you can if you want to for larger sock patterns, but because we're doing such a small one, I'd go one in and just save yourself some aggravation. Okay, so we're going to go one in. So we're not going to count the final two. Okay, these two you're not going to count. So what we want is a total of 28 pegs all the way around. So we have 10 already. So 28 minus um, 10 equals 18. Okay, so we want to divide 18 by 2. And that gives you the number 9. So I'm not counting yet. I'm just moving these in. And you can see that they're a little fussy to move in and out. And you want that. If these were loosey-goosey your loom would be all over the place. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I just gotta move it in two more. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. Once you adjust it, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're just gonna move it out one more. Okay. Okay, so you want your total of 9, and you'll have 9 on both sides, so 9 is 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. There we go. Okay, so there we go, and let's get started on going. So you'll see that this is not a regular kind of loom like you would have saw the other normal cheap uh, looms that we've been working on. And this has a really finer gauge, so you're not going to want to double up on your yarn, um, unlike other things. I don't think that this product is really good when you double up your yarn anyway, because you need some stretching to, uh, action to happen when you're using this product. So let's uh, get started. We're going to create a slip knot. Okay, so this is where it's coming out of the pen. You'd be a little bit generous on your tail. It might serve you a good purpose later. And we're just going to create a slip knot. And what I recommend is put your starting point in this awkward spot in here, other than the outside. Because what happens is that you're going to speed all the way around. And when you get here, it's just going to be bang, 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 until you get here. Right, so might as well make the harder part there. So I'm just going to put it onto the center, one of the five. 
okay and I'm just gonna pull it snug I don't want to pull it tight and you're gonna notice right in the bat with me is that it's a little more difficult to get started with this loom um, and that's because you're trying to get your tension now as speaking of tension you want absolutely no tension coming out of this ball so what I do in between rounds is that I pull extra material out so it's prepared for me to wrap so we're just gonna rotate and I'm right-handed so if you're left-handed you might go in the other way so come in and then go to the next one so go clockwise and then around okay so just like so so in just like so and now we just want to jump to this one okay so it's just in and out in and out and where they join has to be on the interior of this and what I mean by joining is where the string is coming through just like so you'll see it's on the inside I find loom knitting very hard to film, by the way, so if you see me stumbling, it's natural. So I'm just wrapping, and again, there's no tension being put onto this. It's feeding the yarn as it wants it, and that's why these yarn guides are a really great idea to keep on going. So we're just going to wrap right into the end, and I'm just going to relax for a sec, so I'm just going to put it down. Okay, so it's wrapped all the way around, and so now we just want to push these partial the way down a little bit more than halfway and the reason why you don't want to push these all the way down is if we're going to zoom in on the peg in just a second after I'm done this and you'll notice that the groove does not go all the way to the floor okay all the way to the the actual thing so if you go all the way down you're not going to be able to get underneath so just go down partial this is a high quality high-end product by the way so um, they've uh, made it really last by really providing excellent quality so let's uh, wrap again so wrap all the way around so we haven't even started knitting yet. We are doing the cast on process, just like so. Again, no tension. Any kind of tension is going to create yourself a lot of grief. So the, now at the very end, no, now one, we just want to relax. So we're just going to throw it over. And if I had a loom knitting pick with me in my hand right now, I'd be really happy. And I don't, so just stand by just a second. Okay, so picking right up where I left off, I now have my high quality loom pick. This is a professional loom pick. This is unlike the cheap stuff that you've seen in the stores. This is solid steel with a, a rubberized um, grip uh, around it. So you can see it probably looks a little homemade, but in actual fact, it's pretty high quality. So this is the last peg that we wrapped, and we can see that because that's where the string is coming from. And again, just see how I laid it down on there. There's no tension here. You don't see it, so it's not like a violin string where it's going to make a sound. So we're going to take the bottom. Okay, so just reach down and up and over, just like so. And now we can start safely. Now the string doesn't have to matter too much. It can fly anywhere it wants to, and it's trapped within that. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to rotate clock, or sorry, counterclockwise, and I'm just going to take the bottoms over the top. Now I found with myself, this is the third time that I'm actually making a sock. Um, this is the first time filming it. But I found with myself, I need to practice on getting the tension right. Uh, because when you have too much tension with this bad boy, it becomes a little bit of a nightmare and you get worried about um, stretching the material, breaking pegs. Um, I've not broken a peg as you can see. Um, it's actually really high quality. The pegs here are made of nylon. And so they're a lot more different than what you're used to in other products that you've seen on the marketplace. And because of the nylon, I believe that the yarn slides up and down these pegs a lot easier than the cheaper plastic versions of loom knitting on the marketplace. So that is kind of like sort of my spiel. So what we want to do is we just want to go all the way around. I'm just taking the box, bottom over the top. It's not rocket science. And we're coming back on the inside. Okay, so up and over, and we just want to get that last one in. See how it's right at the bottom? It's harder to grab. That's why you don't want to push them all the way down. And I'm just going to take this string and just put it up on the inside so it comes down in. So now what I want to do is just look at this thing and start pushing partial of the way down. Not all the way, just partial. My tension is really good considering this is... Um, my starting, it was a lot stiffer last time I was doing it. So now we want to pick up the yarn guide again, and we want to rotate again. Now you can see exactly where you finished off. It's right here. So the next one, we're going to go clockwise, is the next peg up and over. 
Okay, so we're just going to wrap, making sure there's no tension. See, there's tension when I'm pulling this out of the yarn ball. So you would have that tension going into this product if you didn't pull it free to begin with. So again, just wrap all the way around. You can see the yarn guide, how it just nicely sinks down and below. I'm keeping the pen straight up, and the yarn is flowing like magic. So I've wrapped all the way around again, so I'm just going to relax the, the yarn guide down, and I'm going to grab my loom pick and just take the last one that was wrapped and knit it first. Okay, so just going to take that, and again, we're just going to rotate around. So in the pattern books, um, people sometimes don't like to do nice finished edges. You don't have to, but I like uh, my edges to have like a nice lip, like you can see here on the sock. And we create that by rotating around five times. And then what we do is we take the bottom up and over and put it onto the peg again and re-knit it permanently into position. It's just a little uh, nice effect that you can do. Um, if you want to begin to uh, count your rotations on the amount of times that you've knit so that you have both equal pairs, you can do that. Or you can just take um, a tape measure or a measuring apparatus in some way and just measure out so that they're pretty close. These are homemade socks, so there's a little bit of uh, creativity uh, to it as far as I'm concerned. They don't have to match. Like if I was, I'm doing two pairs here, the colors are not identical, so it's something that's really quite creative in its aspect. So we've now rotated all the way around and again we just want to go again. So I'm just kind of showing you how we're getting started and then I'm going to uh, pick back up where we're going to do that nice brim. So again just wrap. This is We should have actually pushed down first. See once you get into the rhythm you can just use your fingers and just push. Again no tension coming out of the ball and just wrap I find with this loom knitting is that the wrapping is kind of a lot of fun so that the wrapping is what is the addiction in this product. Relax the yarn guide down, grab the pick and push up and over and begin again. So just uh, continue all the way around and I would do five to six more rotations or sorry all together so this will be our third so we got two more rotations to go and what I want to do is I want to be able to form that lip so I'm gonna let you go to that and I'm gonna pick back up where we're gonna form this lip. Okay so now what we're gonna do is that I've done my rotations off camera so now I want to just reach down with the loom pick here and I just want to kind of grab and look for the very bottom. So you're going to see that there's kind of like a spider web idea happening. Just follow it down, just like so, and just grab the last. There will be one string that's beyond the back. And grab that string and put it back onto the hook, or back onto the peg, sorry. And so we just want to keep grabbing at them. So what we want to do, this is the loose end from that. So we want to kind of just put it in there. So then when we're folding up and over, that that loose string gets trapped within um, that, those lines. And what I'd recommend is actually probably going in the counterclockwise because you can see it. See right here? Just It was popping right in front of my face there. So there's the next one. So we just want to put those back. This is how we do a brim of a hat. So this will do a really nice finish for the top of your sock. See how painless this is? It's fabulous. So it's creating a beautiful little um, topping to your sock so that you're not worried about things falling apart on you. And again, we just want to get every one that's on there. It's kind of my it's illuminating. This is kind of my favorite part, doing these brims. I don't know why. I'm just kind of addicted to doing the folding up and over and you can use this technique too for other different types of projects if you wanted ruffles or something within your product it's just up and over okay this is my loose end actually I should pull that off so it's my loose end so what I want to do is I want to tuck the loose end in and I'm gonna let it fall on the outside of the loom just like so and what happens is, is that you have all of this space here anyway it's trapping it in so at the end of the year project you can safely trim that where it's coming out of the project right here
get that last one up. Okay, so now what we want to do is push them partially down. Okay. And now we want to wrap the loom. Okay. So what happened here is see where my string's coming out? This is a good outtake, actually. I'm going to leave it in this video. And I want to take this back up and over and put that string. See where the string was not coming out of the right peg? Sorry. I don't think. See, it was trapped underneath the wrong one. So I'm just going to put this back on. And so now I want to begin to wrap properly. So you've got to watch that loose string and where it's popping out and that it stays at the right area. And we just want to wrap, grab all the tension out of the ball and just wrap it again. So let's see there's a puffy part of the yarn. I think that's artistic creativity when that happens. It doesn't bother me one bit. So we just want to wrap. So you're going to have three different wraps on here. So you got the original, you got the one from the uh, where you put up and over and then now the rewrap. So what we're going to do now is that it's too much tension to get all of this over at one time. So we're going to take the one that's closest to the top. Okay, we're going to take that one and go up and over. Okay, so now we have the bottom one left and so now grab the bottom. It's too much tension to grab it all at one time. You're risking breaking your pegs and really that's truly not worth it. So let's go up and over and then the bottom up and over. So this is permanently creating a fold in your product, giving a nice topper to your sock. Again, it's the same thing. So it's the one right underneath is going up and over first and then the bottom. Up and over. So you'll notice just like doing hats, this has a lot of tension assigned to it and that's because you know you're creating that fold. But you just want to be as gentle as possible and just relax and just enjoy the process instead of trying to rush your way through it. Okay, so let's uh, continue that all the way around. I'll meet you back up and uh, just again, just take your time and uh, pause the video and we'll keep on going. Okay, so now I'm ready and apparently my viewers online saying that I just finished a cuff. So I called it a fold, but it's actually probably called a cuff. And what I want to do now is just wrap as normal. So now what you want to do, this is part of your leg area of any sock. So you can go as long as you want to. So if you want to go up to your yin yang, you're more than welcome. If you just want nice um, little sports socks idea, you can do that. Again, this is pretty well up to your creativity. So just continue like I've shown you already. Just continue to wrap around and then just knit going up and over like I've been showing all along. So this is such a, an easy, kind of almost a mindless uh, project to do. Um, it's actually really, find it quite addictive. You're going to find that, that we just did the cup, that this is going to be a little more tension than you're used to. And again, just take your time. But once you get beyond this, it loosens all back up, just like how we were doing it before. And remember, it's all about the stretch. So you just got to continue. Don't just pick at random. You just got to go in order. Uh, just all the way down because the stretch here, see how I stretched and like that? Watch that. So when I go to pull this one, it's going to pull that down and then use the extra material to pull it up and over. So it does require a little bit of patience, but it is fabulous. Once you get into the rhythm, everything is about rhythm. Okay, so what I want you to do is just go the length that you want to go and what we're going to do is we're going to meet up and we're going to start doing the heel area and that is part of the tutorial that is going to be maybe a nightmare for people to follow but I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible, get the camera in there, show you what you need to do and then we'll keep on going from there. So I'll see you back up when we start to do the heel. And welcome back everybody and this is what I have done so far so you can see it's popping out of the back and I've determined that I, that's as high as I want to go and again you can uh, decide what you want for yourself. Now I find the sock uh, demonstration a very difficult tutorial to uh, film and so I'm going to try this attempt so I don't have to ever redo this again. So what I want you to do, this is where we finished, okay this is exactly where we finished on this project and now we're going to start doing the heel and I'm going to do the heel on the side that's facing the camera and not the other side because it's just easier because now what we're going to be doing is like panel work where we're going to go back and forth back and forth now on the diagram behind me we have 28 pegs altogether. 
Okay, so what we want to do now is just start using only half of them because what we're going to be doing is forming this shape. So we're now here at this point and we're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and then we're going to get to the smallest point which will be right here where I see do not touch and then we're going to get back bigger. But these seams here will be together which causes the shape of the, of the sudden turn in the back. So in actual fact the heel is starting way up here and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller just like you see up there and then as you turn it right at the smallest point that's when you're going to get your turn and then it's just going to get bigger 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 until we get all the way back again. So let's uh, begin this tutorial and um, again good luck and let's try our best to get okay, this so done. So let's begin. So we're going to start here this is where we are right now and we're going to go all the way back to number one. Okay so let's wrap so we're just going to do our normal wrapping as all the way back to number one. So if you need to put a, uh, a stitch marker to indicate where level one is, you're more than welcome to do so. But um, it, I find it doesn't really matter to me because I know that it's halfway point. So it's like the middle one of the five. Okay. So I find with myself it's just easier to do the sock um, like this than it is to go on a different angle. So it's not like I'm doing from here to here. So I'm just going there. And so what we want to do now is that we want to make sure that the ends have two loops on them. Okay, they say that they're loops. So basically you have one and two, just like so, and we want to leave that. So what I want to do is I want to start to the one that's next beside it. Okay, so we're going to leave this one here, and we're going to go to the next one. You're going to see that there's a bit of tension with this. Okay, and you're going to say to yourself, okay, I've done that, but this is going to fall off. Yes, it is but don't worry about that yet we're gonna work on that because what happens is that we need that to be doubled up so what when we go to rewrap again we're gonna make sure that that's still on there so we just wanna work our way back okay so this is the first part Okay, and we're going to come all the way back, even around where we started. Okay, so we're going to come all the way back around. It's all three of those. Okay, so now let's push down. Just slightly push down like you always have. And what I want you to do now is that I want you to take your pen and just clip off one. Okay, so now this means that there's double loops on number one. So now what we want to do is that when we go to wrap now, we want to make sure, because as I told you, this just falls right off. We want to make sure that it's still on there, and we want to now just come on the inside and just go back in the opposite direction than what you came, and go all the way back to one on the other side, where we're going to leave double loops on that side. Okay, so it's the third one up. Okay. So now let's come to this side here. Just going to turn it over. Okay, so I don't want to do this one. I want to do the second one over because I want to make sure I leave double. And you're going to see that there's a bit of tension. Just take it easy, take your time. Okay, and come back and go all the way back across the front again. So now we're just going in this direction. I like to crochet, or when I'm loom knitting, I like to actually move my hand backward as I get the pegs not going forward like I am right now. So it's just a preference that I have. Maybe you have a different one. That's just the way I like to do it. So we want to go all the way back, right? But we don't want to do the very last one because we've already checked it off on our list. We want that to still have double on there. So we just want to go to the second one, like so. Okay, so now this two on there is now permanently on there. Okay, so let's go back to the other side and let's get your pen and say, yes, we've just done double on this side. So now let's go back again. And so that just fell off, so we're just going to rewrap it again just to get it on there. Let's push down slightly everything. And what we want to do now is just wrap again. And make sure you're using a yarn guide. It just makes it so much easier. And now we're just going to rewrap again and go all the way until the one that is before the double wrap. Okay, so if you're looking at there, we're going to go to number two. 
Okay, so we're not going to uh, knit number two. We're going to knit the one right beside it, so the one that's right on the corner. Okay, so now this has double. It'll probably fall off again. We'll have to rewrap it again and you now just go back across the face. Okay, and so one has been checked off on this list, so we want to make sure that we do not go all the way back to one. We want to go to number two. Okay, so do you see that? So now what we have, and again this is a tough tutorial to film, so now what we have is that we have number two done on this side. So let's check it off. So now let's begin the wrapping process again. And again, it just fell off like I told you it would, because I've done it before. And now we just want to make sure we wrap it up again. Let's push everything down. And now we come back all the way across. And we're going to go to number two on the other side. And how do you know it's number two? Because it's the one before it shows it being double wrapped. So that's the one that's double wrapped. So it's the one right before it. And again, that'll fall off, um, I promise you, on that one. So we're going to do the one right before it, okay, right in here. Okay, and now we're going to work across the face. So every time we go back and forth, we're doing less and less pegs, so it just gets faster and faster as we go across. So that you'll see in the background, it says, do not touch. And basically, we never ever uh, shrink beyond that, and we never uh, do anything with that. So we're always going back and forth across the top. Okay, so we want going all the way back. Okay, so now I'm going to go all the way back to here. Okay, so the two is done, and now this side, the two is going to be done on the other side. Okay. Okay, so that fell off like I promised you it would. So we're just going to rewrap that one again. And then just going to come across the face. And now we're going to go all the way to number three. Which will be on the corner. And then again, you can tell because that the next ones are double wrapped. We don't want to wrap that one or knit that one. We want to go the one in front of it. all the way back to number three. So do you see then the fact that what we're doing is that we're gradually changing its shape. It's not a sudden change. Okay, so we are doing three as well on this side. Okay, let's push everything down. And you can start seeing that it's looking different here, right? Because now you're shrinking on one side, or you're actually shrinking, on, which is causing it to start to want to do a bend. Okay, so we want to do three is done on this side. Okay, so we're going to rewrap again, just to get, capture it. And now let's come across and go all the way back until you see it doubling up on the next pegs, so we're coming all the way back to three on this side. Okay, and that's the first one. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to wrap again. This does happen. I could take it out as an outtake, but then you'd think I'm perfect. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to hold that, and so that's the one we want to knit first. Oh, sorry, we don't want to knit that one. We want to knit to the one to the back, or sorry, in forward here. So basically, even though you're wrapping all the way to the end of the pegs, when you're doing this, you don't want to start at the last one you just finished wrapping. You're going to notice there's a, a bit of tension here. Okay, let's, now we're going to go all the way back. 
across the front on this one again. Okay, so we're actually going to go all the way to number four. Okay, so number three is done on this side. So let's wrap again. So, so this is uh, going to wrap. Okay, and you you wrap all the way until it starts to double. It starts doubling on this. Next one here, we do not want to start with that one. We want to go to the one right before. Up and over. And we've got want to get it all the way back. So you'll see that you're still you're already on the front here, but you're not on the front on the other side yet. Push down. Number four is done. Okay, you'll probably just have to rewrap that again. My angle that I'm working at is not really convenient for me. It's more convenient for you as a viewer. So I'm just going to wrap again. Just continue to wrap until you get to where it starts to double up, which is just around the corner. And again, it's just like before, you don't want to do the very last one you just wrapped. You want to come to the one before. Okay. So then you just want to go to this one here, because that's where you started. So number four on the side's done. Okay, and now let's go back across the front again. So you're just gonna make sure I get that first one wrapped. So just go until you see it doubling doubling up. Now it's doubling up on the last one. So I want to get to the one right beforehand. Number five is done. Come back again. Just right where it doubles up again. Again, that's not the one that you want. It's the next one. So number five is done on this side. Okay, so let's go again. So I've got to make sure you wrap where it fell off. Go right to where you see it being doubled up again. You don't want that one. Six is done. On this side, so number six has to be done on the other side. So again, just like before, you just wrap to where you see it going double. I apologize for this. 
I know the angle is kind of rough. Okay. And again, it's like before, so up and over. So now you're on the final three right in the center, and now you're at the very tip of your heel. Okay, so let's push down so you'll see things doubling up on your, your hooks. And you will see now that the material looks kind of weird in the center, but now this is the first part of the heel. So now what we're doing is we're at the very bottom part. These are where the three are right here. And so now we're going to start getting bigger again. So now let's begin that process. Okay, so now this is where we finished off. And now we're going to wrap again. So now we're just going to wrap until you start seeing it double. So going over one extra, and this will be number six. Okay, so we've already done number six on this side. I should have marked that off. Okay, so we're going to go to number six. And that will be the very first one that we start going and you know what there is these are can be a lot of tension in these doubles so just you can do one at a time or you can try to do double what I just did so now we want to work back and start going and start just doing just there okay so you don't want to get number six yet you'll get number six on the way back <coughs> excuse me so let's wrap again Okay, so now let's just mark that. It's really important you keep yourself track, so let's mark it with a plus. So now we're going to get bigger. So let's wrap again until you start seeing it doubled. Okay, so this will be number six on the other side. Okay, so just you can take both if you want to to get it over, or you can just go one at a time. And now we just want to work backward. So, so number six is done. Okay, so let's wrap again. Okay, so now this time we're going to go back to where you see it now doubling up again. And you can clearly see that there's more material here than there is there. So that's kind of a good indication of that. And now we're going to go all the way back. To where you get see where it's single here that's where you're going to stop okay so the five is done so now we're going to wrap again so just coming back and you're going to wrap until you start seeing double so go now it's the final double one it's number five taking both over knitting all the way back okay and you can tell this is the next single so you can't go any further so this is number five done on this side okay let's go again so let's come back in the other direction and again you go until you see double again which is the very last one across again to where you're getting back to the single. So Christmas stockings are not done this way um, to be honest with you. The way that we started doing it was right for Christmas stocks but for the uh, for the actual you know how they hang nicely and perfect in a perfect um, um, down shape um, what happens is that you, on the second part of the heel you actually rush it and you don't take your time. So okay that was number four is done. Okay, so it's going back and wrap the other direction. You know what? Um, see how this is not double? So I didn't go. I gotta go one more. Oops. So I gotta wrap all the way back to the double. It's good that I keep these little intakes, outtakes in because if I'm, because I know that my viewers are going to do the same thing. So this has double, 
sometimes it's not always easy to tell, especially when you've got different colors of yarn working with it at the same time. So we're going to knit all the way back until we get to the single on the other side. Okay, so four is done on this side. Okay, so it's knit back in the other direction. And again, we're just going to knit until you run into a double, which is going to be around the corner this time. Okay, so that would be the first one that we do. And now knit all the way back to where it's single again. So now we're going to knit. So this is number three is done. Now we're going to knit going back in the other direction. And all the way to where you get the double, and the double is on the other side around the corner, just like it was on the other side. So we're going to take the bottoms. There's two of them, right? And take it up and over. And now let's knit all the way back. single is on the other side, so that's it. So number three on this side is done. Let's come back in the other direction now. All the way to the single, which will be the second one in. We are almost done, everybody. So the bottom over the top. the face okay going all the way to the single which is the one right in front here okay let's wrap all the way again so number two is done going all the way to the single, or all the way to the double, okay, which is the second one in on this side, which makes sense. Okay, get the next one. Now across the face. I love this uh, changing color yarn like this because it makes the heel appear different color than the tops of the... Um, in the tops and it's kind of looking a really neat uh, visual effect I think. Okay, coming around for one. Okay, so two is done on this side. We are almost done. Two more. Okay, so starting back up again. Go all the way to the double. And don't forget to push these down so you can clearly see. All the way to the double which is number one on this side. Okay. 
Okay, so one is done on this side. We are almost done, everybody. So one is done on this side. So let's wrap again. And we're going to go all the way to where it's doubled up on the... Oops, I missed one. We've doubled up, which is the last one on the other side. Just like so. Oops. Careful, 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 careful. Let me get that string out of the way and put it back in. When in doubt, stop. Take your time. Illuminating when it jumps off these pegs and you accidentally let go, it can be sometimes the worst thing that you'll ever do. Up and over. And just taking out the bottoms. And once you get to the end, we are officially done the heel. Okay, go all the way back to the one. And now we're back to right where we started. If you remember, we always started in the center here. So all we just need to do now is just wrap. Make sure you got all the tension out of the yarn. Going all the way around. All the way around, everybody and begin to pick up again. And now you just gotta go to the length of the foot um, that you're looking for this, okay? So the heel is already part of the actual bottom of a foot, just like so. So the actual heel here on here is actually right here, okay? So you have to determine the length of your, your foot and you have to include that in. So now what we're just gonna do, just like we did before, Just take the last one that you wrapped, like so, and begin to go all the way around like you did, and this will bring it all right back to the normal circumference of it. And then what I want you to do, everybody, is just go to the length of, that you desire. Okay, there are, are is information online, and if you don't have a child to fit or yourself, if it's for yourself, again, this whole analogy can just be used um, for your own sock. Okay, the center points there, like we had three for the infants, but you know what, for an adult sock, you might not want three, that might be too little, uh, too little of a distance, you might just want to expand it out to six and six, not the touch. So um, the directions are pretty clear on uh, the instruction packages that come in from different companies on how far you should go in on that. So I'm pretty sure people are going to email me what the magic number is and I just suggest there are free patterns online that you can just look that up uh, yourself. So now we're going all the way around. So you'll notice that there was a color jump here and so that was the, the, the front of the actual sock. So you'll see that the heel will almost be a different color um, by doing it this way with this mosaic yarn. And voila, you've basically just completed the heel and just already started a revolution that's normal. You'll see a kind of weird shape going on there. This is the actual heel. Let's turn it around. And you can see that the heel is just making its way out through the back. Just like so. And the whole material has turned upside right. And that's it. So keep on going and we'll meet you back up. And I'm going to show you a technique on how to uh, make the front of the sock come in a little more narrower. And that's the advantage with these adjustable limbs that you can do that. Okay, so carrying right along, here we go. And what I'm going to start doing now is, and you can see the separation of the colors, but if you turn it around, you can see that the colors were transitioning in the heel, and that's what I was talking about, the heels being a different color than what the transition here is. So you can see where we were doing the heel work, coming all back in, and then basically joining it. So basically on the diagram that I showed you, this whole square in here is where we went uh, from fat to narrow back to fat again, and then all the way back around. So now what I want to do is I want to be able to get to the tip of this and actually start bringing it so that it has more of a shape. 
just like so. And this is the advantage of the Wonder Sock Loom 2. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to start narrowing this in. And I'm going to do it for three separate rotations. So what I'm going to just do is take the, the one that's on the edge, it doesn't matter which one it is, just gently now just slide it onto the one closest to the center of your sock area. This might take a little bit of practice uh, getting used to. But I find it's a little bit better to have like a, it looks more eye pleasing to have a sock that kind of comes in narrower at the front. Okay, so then that's one's in. And what we're going to just do now is, and it might be easier to just to slide it already um, before you even do that as well. So let's slide that up where I want. So we're going to slide that up. It might actually make the tension a lot easier to deal with. And yeah, it does. So let's uh, slide this one in. Okay. So you can see that. We're going to slide that and we're just going to move the edge around. I kind of did, I'm going to admit that I did a boo-boo here. And what I did is that I was not paying attention. I was kind of watching a video online and I kind of, um, <laughs> I kind of um, wrapped, you know how we were missing the front one? I kind of wrapped that by accident and I didn't catch it on time. So I, I just double, I'm just going to double wrap it around the end, just like so. Apologize for this slip up. Okay, I'm just going to do that. Okay, and now we're going to go to this side. So you can see that there's sometimes you make mistakes, and you just about it's about recovering and not necessarily about screwing up and just saying screw it. <laughs> okay, so now we're in. So you can see we're a little more narrow, more square. So now we're just going to wrap as normal. And I wrapped all the way around, so even on the sides where we had doubles, just like so, we have that. So we'll just pick it back up to where we left off in the center. Okay, it's just like we did before, working your way back. And again, you can go in the other direction if it makes you happier. And now this side here, you're going to have doubles, so just take the first one up over first, and then the next. It just is easier than grabbing both at the same time. So essentially, you're now just converting the lines that you see here, and you're converting two into one at that point. So what I recommend we do is that we go all the way around, just knitted like we normally did. So I take the one up first, and the next. And I would do this three times. So basically, we're going to shift them all in again on the ends and then come back in and then come back around for knitting I think I'm rambling at this point and I do apologize I'm kind of thinking about other things because I find with this knitting it just um, it's very mindless stuff once you get into the rhythm that's why I like it so much you don't have to really think This one has two. We're back in the center again. Okay, so that was number one. So I told you we're going to do it three times. So I'm just going to show it one more time and then I'm going to let you do it the third time without me helping. And then what we're just going to do is let's shift them all back in. So, so we're going to move this one in. out and just shift in and basically move in the outside edge over one. So this is a really super advantage to this loom that it is adjustable just like so to be able to do something like this.
And if you notice, when I was working with it, a lot of people were commenting at shows that they're worried that because these uh, uh, these are not locked in a position that they're going to lose their shape. And yes, you can see when I was doing it, it doesn't have anything to do with that because these pretty well hold it all in. So we're going to rewrap again. And why don't we just uh, pick back up where I'm going to show you how to cast off. I'm going to do a very detailed um, casting off process with you. And then we're going to sew this bad boy shut and we're going to consider this tutorial closed for today. So let's uh, get going and I'll meet you back up in just a few minutes. Okay, we're going to try to make this as painless as possible. A lot of the casting off uh, really upsets a lot of people um, because it's a little bit of a technique and let's get started. So this is where we finished off. We're not going to wrap anymore. We're not going to use the styler. We're just going to leave it on there and we're just going to wrap one only. So we just want to be a little bit loose and kind of hold it in your hand a little bit. And so we will just want to wrap one, okay, and then we just want to knit over. Okay, so now the tension of this string here is now on this loop, so I could pull this out and it's pulling on the string. I now want to move this whole string back to here, okay, the, where we started. I want to take the bottom, move it back over the top, and now I want to take this one and move it over. Okay, so let's begin again. So this is what we're going to do. So wrap, so it's the same thing that we just did. So wrap, okay, so not too much tension, just over, up and over. Okay, want to take this one and we want to move it back to where we came from. We want to take the bottom up and over and now take this whole thing and move it forward. So let's go around the corner. So just wrap. So we want to take up and over. Okay. We want to take that one. So you can see there's no tension on it because it's from the string we're working with but we do want to pull that a little more tighter. And now take the bottom, up and over, and now take this whole thing and move forward. So this is almost, this is actually creating like a crochet look finish to your product. Okay, so knit, so up and over. We're gonna take this whole thing, move over. Take this one, up and over and now move forward. Okay, knit. Up and over. Move over. Up and over. Move forward. So you can see it's starting to fall off the, the pegs as we're moving forward, which is proper, right? Yeah, so you don't see any tension here, right? That's really uh, critical. Okay, we want to take that, move it over. It's got a little bit too much tension, so I'm just going to pull it a little more tighter. And I'll take it up and over and move forward. So continue that all the way around, everybody, and we'll con come back up where we're going to do, do the last one, and we'll show you what to do next. Okay, so we're almost done. We're on our very last um, pegs here. I'm just uh, finishing up. I'm kind of going around a corner at the same time. Okay, so let's knit our final one. And now that now you can't go anywhere, right? You're on your last one. So what I want you to do is grab that material and kind of pull on it a little bit and come it off your loom. So just come out and pull it out through the top. And now the loom is done. Okay. 
So now we just want to be very careful here, and we want to grab that string, just easier with your fingers. And I would be a little bit generous with it. Um, nothing is worse than being thing. And you can come back up here. You know how we had string hanging out when we first did it, I told you about? We can safely cut that because we know that it was buried in that loom for a distance. So it's gone. And now what we just want to do is take this string and just pull it just like so. Okay, so you can see that you have a nice casted off finish um, to this, but now we need to seal it shut. So what we need to do is go on the inside. So let's flip this bad boy through. And you can already see too, like the bad side, you can see all your stitch work in there. It's all in that fabulous. It looks all nice and consistent. This is, doesn't take rocket science. We're just looking for the loose end. There it is. Okay, so socks. The reality is, is that you don't want to seal your sock so it's up like this. That makes no sense because if you look down at your socks, the seam will go uh, horizontal, right? It'll go this way. So what we want to do now is fold the sock. So look down at it and fold the sock like this. Okay, does that make sense to you? So now we're just going to grab a little plastic needle that this yarn can go through. So, and now we're just going to sew this thing shut. Isn't this super crazy? And this is on the inside out, so then you will not see the seam on the other side. Okay, so now we're just going to tie this thing shut. I'm just going to seal it up a, a couple more times. Okay, and I just want to pull it through just the final, and it will lock. Okay, so I just want to trim it. You might want to do a little bit better job than that. This is the actual from the starting. Okay, that's gone. And now we just want to turn it inside out. And voila, you have now just completed a sock. I think this is the very first time I've ever got the seams to be perfectly good on the both sides. Usually I always have holes and gigantic holes at that that I have to always try to cover. Uh, just by turning the camera so nobody sees it, but um, no, it seems like this sock was bang on and just like so. So there is my little baby sock, just like so. Isn't that close? So you can determine the length of your baby thing. Like this is really just cute for just running around the house or, you know, kicking somebody's butt with it. So that's it for everything and I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, we'll see you here at the Crafting Crowd and the Crochet Crowd. We'll see you.